often when people move from one package to another, they kind of maybe get stuck in the fact that they don't have a feature and, you know, keep on moaning about not wanting to go across to the new package. But I think this creates an opportunity for us to investigate all different options. People might call it workarounds, but it it pushes you to become creative in how you work with your tools. Understanding that different tools operate totally different to uh, in one program to another program. So let's see uh, the one thing that uh, possibly people are looking for when they move across to Affinity Designer and Photo, the Affinity Arrange and Publisher is the ability to use mockups um, because there's such a massive database of PSD files, Photoshop files that are out there. Um, people tend to think, okay, no, we rather stick to doing the mockups there and then use Affinity for something else. But I usually have a different opinion. I kind of find workarounds and in the process get to know how powerful the program is. So let me just show you the process that I've gone through with um, creating the setup with uh, Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. You need both of them when you're doing these mockups. Um, literally Affinity Photo I use just to in initiate a, sm a smart filter, non-destructive filter, live filter uh, for perspective. Um, so let me show you. Okay, if you have these little crosses here, it's because your layer is possibly locked. So if we just have we click that lock and my layers palette is this side here. It's usually under this area. I'm trying to get used to working with it here because it gives me a bit more real estate. Um, it took a bit of getting used to because every time I go to my right when I'm looking for my layers. But I'm getting there. So you have a photo like this and you want to put a image on here. Now if it was a PSD file, they'd have a lot of layers and masks and everything. And maybe at a later stage I'll, I'll show you how I work in there. But they are also very different. It depends on how they were created. Um, and different uh, mockups have different layers and different sort of instructions. So it, it does become a bit convoluted. So I want to show you the principle, principle behind what I do. And maybe from that you can pick up some other things. So this is just a still image. It's a normal pixel based image. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I am going to create a shape and I'm going to use the pen tool and just create the shape that I want to replace. So if you've watched any of the other videos, you don't, um, you know, place and pull, just click there just to start off as your reference area, then you can tweak it afterwards. So in this space, we have that area. I'm going to go to the node tool and then just hover here and modify it um, to the best that we can. And if I need to drop a node there, it's one click and then pull this down. So I have that in place. And then of course, if you have a hand like this, you've got to mask out that area also. So uh, I'll just pop a thing there and pop one here and then hover here and do the little cutout. And yeah, so I, I'm not going to be totally exact here and I'm not going to spend much time, but if I click here, I know I'm going to be able to pull it out a bit and then so just accept that I, I'm, I'm going to have a bit of uh, faulty areas here. Well, I don't need to do that one. I think this one we need to sort out. OK, and then I press, I think it's control just to move the, the one side or is it shift? Not too sure. Anyhow. So I have that page and the other beautiful thing about this program is that you can zoom in like a million percent. And I'm not exaggerating, a million percent is what they claim. So I'm just put that there. Okay, click there and then pull this a little bit out. Okay, I'm going to just put another one there and then make that a very sharp point. Okay, if you find the curves are going to a wire, then just drop in a node that is like a sharp point. It, it kind of gives you a bit more control over the straight line setup. Okay, 
I think that's enough for now. So we have the shape and what I do with the shape is I come here and say insert the selection. Okay, because what this does is automatically create a mask for me in this area. So I'm going to take that, click insert. Okay, so it's activated while I'm on that curve layer. And then I'll go file and place. Now, yes, crucial when you go get the image that you're going to start off creating the mock-up with. It might not be the image you're finally going to use because I'm just creating the, the template mock-up setup. But the image you put in here has to be converted to a document. By that I mean you can open it up in Publisher, in Photo or in Designer. Just open up a image and then save it as that format. Save it as a Publisher file. A, a, and when I say Publisher I'm talking about Affinity Publisher. Um, save it as a Designer file or a Photo file. So it has that as an extension. So it's an entire document but it just contains that single file. So I've done that on this occasion. So this is my baby brother. He's no longer a baby. He's getting to his 50s soon. So uh, yeah, this was when he was a little youngster. So I've just opened his photo and it's a PNG transparent background and I saved it as Aiden and this is a designer file. Okay, so I'll open that. And now because I have that, had that selected on the curve layer, it will now place whatever I'm going to place over here inside that like a mask. So as I pop it there, that's what's happening there. Okay, so if you look here in the layers palette, you'll see that it's now this embedded document is basically clipped into this area. So I'm going to do two things here. Um, I think I'm going to uh, firstly go and make sure that this is aligned correctly. Now what some people will do is do this and try and pull it down here and but because you're doing this you you can't turn these if you turn these uh, selections into nodes you're going to then eventually lose the ability of being an embedded document. Okay so what I suggest is go control Z bring it in like it should be brought in and then what I'll do is I'll go to File, go to Edit in Photo, and when you click there, the reason we're using Photo um, is to be able to get access to these live filters. Okay, and this is the one brilliance of Affinity. It gives you filters and it's non-destructive. So what we're going to do is make sure we're on this uh, object here, the embedded document, and I'm going to click Live Filter. And the one I want is perspective. So it puts over a grid in my case. Now I am not going to do any editing here. All I want is to um, initiate this live filter here and then I'm going to go over and let it transfer itself over to designer. You can work here. There's no problem with it. I just prefer working in designer. But the only way I can get this filter activated is through the photo app. In future, maybe we have the ability to do live filters inside the um, Affinity Designer app also. So I'm going to just close this and there you can see it's now got the, the live filter. So then I'm going to pop back to Designer. Let's just go there. So there we are. And here if we look here now, there we can see there is the live filter. And to activate it here, to edit it, I double click on the filter. And there we go. Okay, so this is where I want to be. And now I can do the distortion. So I'm going to go in there. I'm going to put the image there. And I'm going to place that up there. Also do this in this corner. So what I'm doing is literally getting perspective um, I'm not clipping it into this area like creating a clipping mask or anything for for this specific thing. I'm just creating the perspective of how it needs to be. Okay, so this is to do with perspective. It's not to do with a clipping mask. The clipping mask is already what we've been working with. So when I'm happy with that, I can just close that. And in this case now, I'm going to take this image and keep down 
you can see that if I size it, it's it's literally within that space. So I've got to adjust the clipping uh, so that we can fit it all into that area. So what I'll do is I'll go Control X to delete that. Oh no, uh, Control Z. Um, let me just get back to the perspective layer. Oh, this is the this is the challenge. It's it's actually gone quite smaller, so I've got to just get it to outside the boundaries. Okay, you can see this is the challenge that if I keep it inside the boundaries, because the image might be bigger or smaller. Um, in this case, I'm going to just do perspective and maybe get the the bordering line sort of one border line on the outside so I can still keep the perspective if that makes sense so this so one uh, block is going to be on the outside of the actual image the uh, cropped area so okay so I'm not going to use this edge because there's a bit of bleed that still happens um, you know so I'm I'm experimenting with it also so I've now just realized because previously I was taking these points and putting them there with a perspective tool but then there was a kind of offset of the original image so I'd recommend doing it like this or even if there's still an offset between the edge of the the image that you're placing then you could possibly take it to you know the next cube you know take it right out that way but for this I think we have sufficient space there so I'm going to say okay so it basically goes right to the edges hopefully that made sense in my explanation so initially what I did is I used these points of the perspective and put them right at the end of the objects but then the the image was offset so I've now ex overextended but I'm using this line as my my guideline there so I have to do that so that line is there that one comes down that's pretty much what we want okay so now once I have that in what I've done is dropped a document in an embedded document I've gone to photo I've pulled in the live perspective filter then I've come back to um, designer and now I've tweaked it but made sure that I tweaked it so that there's at least one outside um, block that kind of bleeds off the image that I'm wanting this to go in okay and and that's pretty much where we we have now so normally if I had to double click on a normal image it will just zoom in in affinity design or photo but because this is an embedded document if I double click now look what happens we open it up pretty much to what uh, Photoshop used to do in in, in uh, the, my previous uh, life with Photoshop so here is where the big difference comes okay so if I go back to the original here I can come in and treat this create overlays create shadows do all the other things create you know textures whatever it is because this is is an image but this image that we're putting in here now is an embedded document so let me just close this again another way of getting to it is making sure you're on that layer and you can go and click edit document or if you've got another document that you just want to replace immediately you can go replace document and then it will open your browser and you can put one but if I say edit document it's the same as me double clicking on this embedded document so I say edit document can you see we've got here and over here now let me start the exciting thing I'm going to undock this so I grab this and just pull it off and let me just proportionately size it down here so this is the one we're working on then the other one I'm going to grab also and pull it loose okay and just size it yeah so I have these two tags now that we've literally undocked okay but if any of you know when you worked in Photoshop you double clicked on it opened up this the, the other image and then you did your edit over here moved it accordingly saved it closed the document and it merged there okay um, whereas in this year now look what we have if I grab the image here and I move it look what's going on in there there's a real-time feedback if I size this we're having real-time feedback in that object of what it looks like 
and this is why affinity is just next level okay they they give you feedback and this artboard that we're working on here is a, another document so it's an embedded document it's embedded in here so this modified one is what we can create as a standalone mock-up um, so pretty much people will go in and you'd say okay i want to create this with a bit of a board around the edge and a title so you can just double click on that surface uh, move it out there just move this one where do we go okay so we can come to this document and in the same way um, if I go I could put some artistic text you uh, must just make sure you clicked onto this area when you want to do the edit because they two different areas like they operate normally in the tabs but if this is the if that's the document that's how you can work with it you see where it goes so in the case here, if, if that was the original document, you can see everything happens in real time live. Whoops. Um, I think I've docked this in another place. So there we have it. So you can have a file like this and this will be the mock-up. And if somebody wants to alter it, um, you know, they don't go click on layers here. They literally come there and double, uh, we double click there. And we have all of these things in. and of course you can loosen it up um, move that around place it up top take that image maybe move it over there and this is it you know you're not you're not s settled with just what they give you you can in real time get feedback see what's going on I work in 3d and real-time feedback is the only way to go now and this is now translated into the graphic space so I love this um, there we go and you save this as save it as a don't don't flatten it of course save it as let's say Hayden and there you go so you can release this to people and say if they want to create a booklet like this with a name on top or even move the name they just get it as a mock-up like this so hopefully this has been of help i'm excited about it um, i'm just experimenting with different stuff um, i'll spend some time with actual photoshop um, uh, mock-up uh, files and see if i can clean them up and just probably uh, you know tweak it and see if there's any lessons to be learned from that um, to bring across this way okay so have a fantastic day and god bless